Sprinter van. It's a Dodge. This one's a 07, so 3500 with the diesel with the dually rear wheels. Um, so just knocking out brakes for them. Um, you know, I work on a lot of stuff. Typically, I recommend um, brake pads and rotors, but in this case, um, this is an electrician's work uh, van, and he's kind of looking to just get it done real quick. So it's a Sunday. Um, he's going to be on service calls and everything tomorrow. So I'm just going to knock out the brakes real quick. You can see it's an electrician. It's heavy, too. This, this thing's a beast. Feels like a shot. So normally I would say get um, pads, get rotors, get these wear sensors. But, um, you know, these rotors held up really well. You know, upon inspection, they're actually really good. They're, they're really not even glazed. There's no warping. So when he hits the brakes, it's not, it's not pulsating. So, you know, I gave him, I gave him the, the go ahead to let's just, let's just do the brake pads. So I'm going to bring you in here, show you what I'm doing. Um, trying to get the best view that I can. So set up behind with light. And I'm sure it's still going to be a little rough. Maybe get a little closer. Okay. Okay. One more placement. Okay. Right about here. It's always the... It's, it's always a little rough. Now, I'm going to... I already got what I really needed to get loose. So I'm going to move the light so that... You can see, more important than me. Like I said, I already got what I needed to get handled. So, I'll put the light right here. I'm gonna tilt this up a little. And I'm gonna give you a couple tips and tricks. Like, like I said, this is I do this professionally, but um, not typically on sprinters. But this guy helped me out, so I owe him a favor. Okay. So, first things first, this is cheating. I come in with a um, screwdriver, I wedge it right between the um, brake pad and the rotor, or better yet, between the brake pad and the outside uh, ear of the caliper. And I go ahead and I just gently pry this. What I'm doing is compressing the caliper piston. And you know, they make brake caliper piston compressors that work even better. but. In my case, um, I just do this because I like to. Uh, and then when that's compressed, we're going to pull these upper caliper bracket bolts off. These bolt the caliper to the bracket. And then, and this is what's a little bit unique, there's a wear sensor right here that I've actually got to come through, grab with pliers, and it's going to pull it towards me. So I just disconnected it right here. And I, I recommend doing that before you try to get the caliper off. So now once I get this last bolt out, I'll be ready to flip the caliper up. And I'm gonna, I would say for you starting out, I probably get a, I probably get a, either a zip tie or a nice S hook to hang this caliper so that it doesn't fall and either tear the wiring for the wear sensor or hurt your flex hose. But for me, I'm gonna prop it up where I'm comfortable with it, and I'm just gonna work really still. Um, then I can go ahead and I can pull the brake pads. Just get those out of there. You can see this one's got that wear indicator, that sensor here. So um, I'm gonna leave this one in for right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that one. So um, next thing, because I've got a pretty nice kit here. I did the Rock Auto, it's a Bendix kit. It comes with, as, as a good kit should, comes with the new, they call them like abutment clips or shims or whatever. Um, comes with new ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. I recommend doing one at a time. Take this off. This one really doesn't need much cleaning. Um, and then I'm gonna match it up. Make sure I'm doing the correct placement. So this one is not correct. This one, this one is also not correct. 
insane. It's gotta be one of these last two. It's actually probably both of them insane. Okay, this one's good, but I wanna I wanna just pop this in. You'll be able to see the inner ones better. I'm gonna pop this in exactly the way I took it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that it's not gonna hit the rotor. And that one feels pretty good and tight. Let me get this upper one. Just pop it out. So this is a lot of a lot of techs. I've worked with a lot of people will just leave the old ones on. And you can, it's not really that big of a thing, but the new ones come in the kit and you know the new ones don't need any cleaning. But I'm gonna show you what to watch out for because I ran into it on the other side. If you pop one of these clips in here and they're miss, you know, like they got a little bent or something, you need to straighten them. And if they get kind of loose, sloppy, like I'm sliding it in and out, if it has the ability to go over and touch the rotor, believe me, it will. And that's going to come back as a high pitched screech. And they're going to think you did something wrong. And they're right. If it makes noise, you did do something wrong. Um, so I got my upper one here. I, I'm going to bet that one of these is going to give me trouble. I, I Two out of the four gave me trouble on the other side. Okay, this one, actually, that one's pretty good too. If anything, it's going to be this last one. If not, I'll simulate what you can expect. So when I clip this on, okay, this one's also good, which is pretty good. But what happens sometimes, if you look, there is a little um, clip kind of retainer here and here. And if those get too spread out, this clip will walk a lot and that'll contact the rotor and you'll get either a consistent noise or possibly even an intermittent noise. All right, next, I pulled the brake pads. I know which one's the inner and outer. It's a dead giveaway because you can look at kind of where it wore. So like here, here, and here, this is the outer pad. Also, remember I left that wear sensor in the inner pad for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this um, yeah, you know what, well, before I get the pads in, let me, let me do the greasy work. Okay, these guide pins, you see they're, they're hard to move. I'm putting a lot of effort into that. That's no good. So, I'm going to just kind of like free it from the rubber. Try to pull it out. Okay, that's, if this has encountered, um, petroleum-based grease, it'll swell the seals and stick really bad like that. So this is what I use, 3M silicone paste. You can use a brake caliper loop specifically. It's going to be silicone or ceramic based. You just you can't use regular grease. I guess you can do whatever the heck you want. If you do use regular grease, that's petroleum based, like wheel bearing grease. And sometimes they even call it wheel bearing and brake grease. No, you're going to have a lot of problems. So look at this. I'm pumping it. It's moving good now. Very nice. Now this one, May give me a little bit more trouble because I gotta kind of hold the caliper out of the way. And of course, this one's also really tough to move, which, you know, these pads were not really all that worn. This guy called me during the week and said, hey, can you do my brakes this weekend? And I said, yep. But we weren't able to do an inspection beforehand. So I just, I just got front and rear brakes, pads. Um, and then, of course, when I get into it, it's like, if I'm going to take this thing all apart, I'm putting the new pads on. So these ones really aren't even worn out. But he got a brake, uh, service brake message. So I think it's just the front ones. Doesn't matter. He's getting all four today. And that, that's our arrangement. So same. This one just, just, I don't, I don't go real crazy unless they're rusty. And I used to run into rust a lot on the East Coast. So now I'm spoiled West Coast guy. We don't have a whole lot of corrosion here. The only salt is at the beach. So your results may vary. If those are corroded, you're gonna need to wire brush them. Better yet, bench grinder with a wire wheel. It's perfect. Okay, now that those are lubed up, I'm gonna take my pad here, and I verified already the inner and outer pads are the same. I put just a little bit of grease here, 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 just a little. And then this is a key, especially if these clips are kind of chintzy. You really got to get the brake pad placed just right 
if you try to fight it in there, you'll distort the clip and then the clip will make noise and then you look like a ding dong. Okay, so that one went right in there, um, but it took a little, it, there's finesse involved. But <laughs> don't beat them in, don't get mad at them. Just beauty, you know, it's just cool. You might have to practice a few times and if you mess the clip up, pull the clip up and, and out and fix it or whatever, that's fine. Okay, so the outer one, and also notice, I'm not touching the lining surface. You don't want to get any grease on there. Okay, the outer one I can usually get really easy because I can see it. It's the inner one that's tough. Now, as for this sensor, um, I got new ones, so I'm going to install the new ones. I got new ones and I gotta figure out where they're at. I might have left it on the other side. So I'll show you that. Okay. One hand, new one hand. Um now again, yeah, these ones aren't really up more, so I could probably reuse that one. But here's the thing. This, this was two dollars. If I don't put it on and it causes a problem, I'm an idiot. If I do put it on, I save the day for two bucks. Okay, look at the orientation. The wires go towards the rotor and it's just gonna slide right in. There's a little spot for it. Boom. And I'm just gonna pre like kind of poke this out. Now, this is a personal preference. Um, some manufacturers recommend a little bit of grease where the two pistons hit and a little bit of grease where the front of the caliper contacts the pad. Think about it, noise is a vibration and putting that little bit of goop on there, if it's going to reduce vibration a little bit, that's going to reduce noise a little bit. So personal preference, that's up to you. Now, if I've got this compressed all the way, it's going to drop right on as it did. Now I want to point something out where these little ears are. Those, they need to be slid in just right. See that? Yes and yes. If you don't do that, you're going to be fighting. You're going to be, you just, when you're a rookie, Everything is difficult, just trust me. But when you kind of get a better idea as to what you're doing, stuff goes a lot smoother and a lot easier. So I think that's probably pretty decent lighting. Can't see. Okay, so I'm gonna start these two bolts. Might have to finagle the caliper a little bit. I'm just gonna lift it a little. Okay, now I'm getting these bolts in and I'm gonna reach through and I'm gonna connect this sensor here. Okay. If I have to get pliers, I will. If I could do it by hand, that's better because I've got my hand in my hand. Okay. Ah, that one's fighting me a little bit. I'm going to make sure it's got the right orientation, which it does. It didn't, it's, it's a continuity thing, so it's not like you can connect it um, backwards, uh, but you, it does help to be able to see. Doing brakes is always dark. So, and this light is sweet, but still, it's still a little tough to see. Okay, you can definitely see where it's got to be. I just got to make it happen here. You better knock it off. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, we should definitely be able to just slide right in. Okay, there we go. Click, okay. So that one's in there. I'm just gonna torque these to spec and continue in a minute. Okay, then when I'm done, I can make sure this caliper slides because it's a floating. It should move nice and easy this way. And um, I can't right now, but normally I like to spin the uh, caliper or sp spin the rotor and make sure that I don't get any noise or anything. So I'm gonna say um, Good for the rear. I'll come back with all the specs later All right, and because I'm having all four wheels off this I told the, this customer I'd hook him up with a rotation 
Now it's a dually, so um, this is the inner dually wheel. I'm gonna put that right back on. The outer dually wheel, um, it it's, gets a little bit more tricky here. So this has the extension um, to the valve stem. So actually, I'm not gonna be able to rotate that one. Total bummer. I thought I was gonna be able to, cause check it out on the other side, they did a, they had a little adapter put in. So they put a regular valve stem in and then um, they, they hooked it up with one of these. So if I were to take this and rotate the tires, I'd put this on the tire from the front and then it would be good for the uh, outside rear, but crap. Guess that plan is shot. So, well, onto the front brakes, I suppose. I'll let him know I, I, I can't really rotate him or he'll have to, he'd have to end up climbing under the truck to put air in that tire. Matter of fact, this will probably even hit the rotor or hit the caliper as it goes by. It's gonna hit something, so darn, I'll rotate. And before I lower this baby down, I wanted to show you how I would personally lift it. So I got that jack right in the center part of the rear axle and I got two jack stands under the axle as well. So I, I wouldn't do it any other way. I'd lift it right there on the center. All right, I thought this would be a really good point too. So when you're putting these dually wheels on, um, the inner one is gonna have the extension valve, spring, valve stem. And I recommend sliding this one on with that thing down at the bottom around six o'clock or so. Cause then when you slide this one on, you're gonna wanna land this coming through the hole right above that valve stem. And it's just easier if you can kind of look down and see it. So I'll show you, and these are heavy, so you better uh, eat your Wheaties this morning. They're heavy for me, 200 pounds. So that's ballpark close. I'm just gonna kind of keep my eye on a stud. I'm doing a little bit of work with my foot, so cheating a little, cheat where you can. Just a beast. Then uh, I'm gonna sand this one because it goes on reverse. I have to spin it a little. Now, when you slide this on, you gotta be really careful not to bang that inner valve stem. So if you break that, now you got a leak. You gotta be able to fix that one without taking the tire off of the wheel. Okay, so I can already tell I'm kinda hitting it. So I gotta go up pretty high, which is gonna take a lot of strength. sucks so uh, might have bent a little okay. try not to block the view but it is tough okay there you go all right try not to lose it again This is why typically somebody's gonna charge you more money to work on your big stuff. This is a lot harder than a little car, physically. And translates a lot of time more time. So there you go, hope that helps a little bit too. Lighting was really bad, but check it out. They both land in the same hole. All right, time for the front, except this one. I feel like I can probably see a little better. So, not much better. Um, so, looking through, you can see brake pads shot. Wear sensor, I'm sure, is wrecked. But this hole right there, towards the, you know, towards the lug nuts, that's gonna be my prying location. I'm gonna do my best to get the light in a decent spot here. That's all I got. So, 
I'm gonna land my screwdriver in here onto the back side of the pad. So I'm really not even contacting the friction surface. And I'm just gonna start to gently pry. Now, if the caliper's got an issue, this, this really won't work. So, um, you know, if everything's, if it's just that the brake pads are worn out, this shouldn't be that hard. So I'm just prying with a decent amount of force. And this one seems like it's gonna be a little tougher. Sometimes you can get it in this way, but worst case, if this doesn't work, I'll get um, either a C-clamp or a caliper um, piston compressor. But this is my, this is just, this is my go-to right here. It saves time typically. But not saving me anything, because I can't get it to work right now. Let me play with it and I'll come right back to you. All right, so I suspect I may have a little bit of an issue. So look, super hard to see, but these caps right here, I'm gonna start by popping those off. Flip it around. Okay, then these are six millimeter Allens. So just gonna uh, get those out, top and bottom. I'll check back in a minute. All right, so those are loose, um, but there's a little sliding um, part that I gotta kind of get freed up. It's been a little difficult here. I'm just pushing back on that a little. That's the guide pin again. Kind of, kind of a weird design on these. Uh -oh. So, all right, so what I was moving was this piece right here, this whole assembly, which I'm going to have to take out, and uh, that's going to be our grease points, but that's going to take a little bit of work. Okay, so, it's all right if I drop a couple things. All right, now, actually, these brake pads aren't really that worn out, so, hmm. Interesting. Well, I'm going to continue with the work and I may have to do some troubleshooting on the on the on the message that we got on there. Kind of weird. So, this is what I usually try to avoid using the screwdriver pry bar deal, but uh I just got this right up on the top, nice and flat supporting on the caliper, and then I got um, the less supportive side against the back part of a brake pad and the lining part of the brake pad pushing the pistons and now I'm just gonna crank this in but I really can't do it with one hand. Well, I pretty much cranked it in until it stopped so that's what you get. A couple nice compressed caliper pistons now continuing the work. Alright so I'm gonna attempt to do this one-handed. I really can't get the camera quite right and you know my my primary goal here is to fix this guy's van and if i get a youtube video that helps a couple people cool but i i really can't make this into a movie studio so i'm just trying to grab the very edge here but it's kind of fighting me so i try again to push and pull and we just gotta work that baby out um, it should move quite a bit easier than it is, but that's why we're gonna that's why we're gonna do the service on it. So I also may use the original bolt. So I'll pull that through. Okay, come on, baby. Okay, we're close here. I use it as a little handle. It's just a stubborn one. So I'm going to grab my screwdriver. And I'm going to give it a shove. Right through here. Okay. I really should be able to grab that now. And yet, it's still a little difficult. Okay. And I unseated the boot. That's not that big of a thing. Um, it figures. It's just because this is so dry. But... Um, I'm just going to reseat the boot, you know, by working it in like this. 
and the last little bit I usually am able to push in with a screwdriver. So it's just gonna kind of go back into its groove here. Pretty close, pretty close. Okay, so that's no big deal. Now, again, I'm gonna grease this up right here and start working it. Same thing, the silicone paste. Silicone paste does make the difference. Um, this one, again, it wasn't really corroded. This one was closer to really needing um, some more serious work, but it didn't need much. And I've kept track of which way it came from. It's got to go in this way right here. In fact, I may actually slide it through from the other side. I don't know if I can. Yeah, that's going to go a little better. Come on, baby. Okay, and then I'm gonna get the boot landed in its little groove there. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna slide it a little past. A little more. And I'm just gonna make sure I get some good grease right here. And now, now that I've contaminated my gloves, I'm gonna have to clean that up. So, pretty familiar stuff to the back one. By the way, I've got this on a jack. I've also got the jack stand. I would never put my legs under something like this without it being supported by a jack stand. It's stupid. I'll pull these clips. Um, I'm gonna test fit the new one. Same, I got a Bendix kit for the front. So I'm just gonna look at them together. Look about the same to me. And again, if these are rusted, these little upper parts of the squares, all that would need to be either filed or sanded out, but spoiled again, not really bad. So I'm just gonna get this baby fit. Okay, kinda fit. Kinda fit, kinda didn't fit. You compare that to the original. Hmm. Original definitely fits a little better. Um, it's always possible that some of these get bent. But you know what? Eh, I think it's pretty much there. Yeah, that one. That one's gonna be there. That's all right. And I may give it a little spin. Oh, sounds like it's touching though. If I, if I let that go, that one's going to be a problem. I'm not looking to do the job two times. So, these are probably not going to get used. They look... Man, they look really similar, though. Let me do another, let me do another test fit. Okay, I'm definitely not in the right spot. Let's try another clip. Yeah, this one's bent. This one's clearly bent right out of the box. They're easy to straighten. If you can tell where they're bent, and if you can test fit them, and they turn out good, then so be it. But you know, right there, it's just, it's just too, it's just too close to the rotor right there. The original see the original does not hit the rotor try that one more time and try a third clip okay that one's bent even worse awesome yeah well these aren't going as well it's hard to say if it's a manufacturing thing or a shipping thing or whatever. No, see, they're just no go. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have to give this clip a little love. Be right back. All right. So you can see I got it cleaned up. Uh, I'm gonna again fit it here. See, it just it just feels better. It's not rubbing, that's the caliper right now. Let me lift it a little higher. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same to this bottom one. I'm gonna reuse the originals in this case. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the pads, and uh, you know I noticed this brake pad got extremely hot. Um, if you notice, the paint's burned right off of it, and it's pretty thick. So I'm gonna continue this um, demo on how to do brakes, but apparently. This car's got more issues, and I really need to get this job done, so I'm probably not gonna do a walk through the troubleshooting. However, um, the fact that that caliper was kinda hard to compress might lead me to believe that caliper's starting to stick. Um, and I'm gonna do a little bit more checks. Sometimes, also, the, uh, the flex hose right here that you can see my finger on just barely, maybe? Right, man. Up to C. This flex hose will collapse internally so it'll let fluid pump up the brake caliper, but it won't let it release back to the compensating ports of the master cylinder. So um, if I if I feel like it's a good lesson, I will do the do a walkthrough and um, show some stuff. Otherwise, I'll probably just I'm probably just gonna put in the comments the torque specs on this stuff. And if I do find a hydraulic problem, I'll put that in the comments. But I'm kind of looking to wrap this video up and get moving at a little bit of a faster pace. Um, so I think that should be enough room for the caliper. But I'm going to go ahead and swing it down as a test fit. Um, as always, I like to put a little grease, grease, grease. And I like to do a little grease where the two pistons touch. And... I was able to compress it. It didn't seem like it went all that difficult. So I'm gonna test fit, drop a bolt. I'm gonna test fit this, uh, well, I need to put the wear sensor in. Oh baby, stay with me now. All right, so wear sensor's in the package. Gotta get them out. Okay, wear sensor. It's the same really as the rear. Wires go toward the rotor. So I'm going to slide this baby down. Looks like I'm there. I'm going to pre-line this upward. Swing this up. Now I'm also going to make sure I don't twist my hose up here. That will cause a lot of trouble. Similar trouble, actually, to what this car is experiencing. Sometimes a pull, sometimes brake drag. Too much drag means too much heat, and that would burn the paint off the pad. I'm surprised it didn't warp rotors, though. So, um, again, I'm just trying to uh, pop that harness through the hole and land this caliper where it goes, and smooth, smooth, smooth. And then I drop this bolt. So this is the guide pin bolt. Once I get this um, lifted up and kind of fit, I'm going to buzz these bolts in and deal with my torque specs and stuff off camera. So um, I feel like I'm missing one bolt. I'm definitely missing one bolt. Mm -hmm. There it goes, way back in there. Okay, so. Um, you know, this job's not rocket science, but sometimes in automotive it's about noticing little things, and I noticed something that's a problem with that brake pad, so, um, okay. Long story short, you're going to tighten those bolts to spec. I'm going to do my connection here, same as in the back one. Right? It's, they can be a little tricky, though. This one I may cheat a little bit with. Of course, I need to be where the camera is. Oh, interesting. That one doesn't want to fit as well. Shoot. I claim that the sensors were the same front and rear, at least allegedly. Okay. Do not nick the wire. I'm just touching the plastic. 
and um, those wires have a little coating. So if you nick the coating off and they touch, that'll indicate continuity. That would be our brake warning light. You know, that would cause brake warning light. So, okay, well that one's plugged in. Okay, I'm gonna torque, I'm gonna get the wheels on, I'm gonna get the wheels torqued, I'm get all that stuff. So basically, um, the only thing I'm gonna do after this, I'm gonna pump the brake pedal, make sure it gets a firm brake pedal. I'm gonna verify my brake warning indicator is off. And that's, uh, from there I'm gonna do a road test and I'm gonna do a speed up to about 10 and slow down, about 20 and slow down, about 30 and slow down. I'm gonna just gently break these in and there'll be some smoke and some smell, but I'm gonna take care of all that before I release it to the customer so the customer doesn't know anything about smoke and smell because it'll be all set. So burnishing the brakes. And hopefully this helps somebody.